Well, hey guys, today we're gonna to be talking about lichen planus. What is it? Why does it happen? How do we treat it? and what can you expect if you've been diagnosed with lichen planus? What is lichen planus? It's a chronic inflammatory condition that affects both the skin as well as the mucosal surfaces. It's not just one skin condition, it's actually many different types, many different presentations. Lichen planus can affect the skin, it also can affect inside the mouth, the genitals, it can take on different shapes, localized to different areas, it can be triggered by certain medications, it can affect the nails pretty significantly and it also can affect the scalp the hair and lead to hair loss when it affects your hair follicle that's known as lichen plano pilaris it mostly affects adults anywhere from the age of 30 to 60 not super common in young children though it can happen 10 percent of people who have lichen planus on their skin will also have it involving their nails and about half of people who have lichen planus on their skin will have it involving the mucosal surfaces what causes lichen planus in the first place it's multifactorial meaning there are multiple different underlying causes that drive this process to happen, but overall, it's basically an autoimmune process. An individual's immune system, for whatever reason, gets flared up in such a way that it decides to attack some sort of protein, which we haven't identified yet, that is present on cells that make up your skin and your mucosa, known as keratinocytes. There is certainly an underlying genetic tendency towards this condition, but also any sort of significant physical or emotional stress can bring this about. Stress triggers so many skin problems and lichen planus is no exception. Lichen planus is one of those skin conditions that uh, exhibits what's known as the isomorphic response, otherwise known as kebnerization. Basically, what can happen is if there's trauma in the skin, any kind of skin injury like a cut or you've just been scratching aggressively, it will actually elicit the lichen planus to come out in those areas of skin trauma. It also can pop up though if you have a skin problem like say shingles that occurs, you go through, and then that skin problem resolves. Well, when the skin problem resolves, sometimes the immune system in the skin in that particular area is somehow extra revved up and it decides, hey, let's attack some random protein and all of a sudden you have lichen planus there. That's known as Wolf's isotopic response, basically a skin problem arising in an area of the skin where there was a prior skin problem that resolved. Anytime you get a viral infection, whether it be a cold or a flu, a lot of times the immune system can get a little confused, get a little annoyed, and do an autoimmune skin rash. And lichen planus is a classic example of that. And a notorious trigger in terms of a viral infection for lichen planus is hepatitis C. A lot of people will develop lichen planus in the mouth as a result of a contact allergy to metal fillings, which aren't really used much anymore. In those cases, when the metal filling is removed, um, then the oral lichen planus can go away. But people can also develop lichen planus after a contact dermatitis to something that you know they were allergic to and came in contact with. And then of course, medications. Side effect, rare side effects of certain medications are skin problems. When you're prescribed a medication and you read the package insert and it's going over every possible side effect known to man, it'll often just say skin rash, right? Well, in dermatology, we don't like to just say skin rash. We want to know what kind. And one of them is lichen planus. can come about as a skin rash uh, from certain medications. So that's what causes it. What does it look like? How do you know you have it? So it can take on many different appearances. Like I said at the beginning, there are many different types of lichen planus, but I would say the classic stereotypical uh, version of lichen planus is gonna appear. The way it's described in textbooks and what we often see is a skin eruption where you have these light pink to violet, purplish, slate gray, bumps that have a polygonal shape to them. You know, they're raised up above the surface of the skin. It's called a papule. And the, they're flat topped, almost like a wart. They're flat topped. And if you look really carefully, they have this lacy white stuff on top of them. That's called Wickham stria. There are a lot of different variants though of lichen planus in terms of the shapes and the appearance that it can assume. Uh, you can have a hypertrophic variant where 
The bumps have this like real scaly thick stuff on top of it. Alternatively, you can have an atrophic variant of lichen planus where you have a little bumps usually arranged kind of in a circle, in a ring, and the center is uh, depressed, it's atrophic. There is an annular variant, annular meaning ring shape. This is often um, the type that appears in the genital area and men on the penis. The scrotum can happen in the groin area. The little bumps can be clustered together, but like I said, because lichen planus is a condition that exhibits Kebner phenomenon, uh, uh, it often will come out in areas of trauma, so it's not unusual to have little bumps grouped in lines, li a linear configuration. Some people develop lichen planus exclusively in areas um, that are exposed to the sun. That's known as actinic lichen planus, and that variant, part of what triggers it is, the, is sun exposure. Something about you know sun and some people manifest some antigen in the skin that your immune system doesn't like, and this is a consequence of that. So sun exposed areas, people can have lichen planus exclusively. So that's the skin, but lichen planus um, loves mucosal surfaces too, because you have that same cell type in mucosal moist surfaces, like inside your mouth, the genitalia. So inside the mouth, you will see this kind of lacy white stuff inside the cheek, on the tongue, that's called wickamstria. You don't feel it, but you can see it. Other people develop painful mouth sores. You can have very inflamed gums with redness and swelling. Lichen planus involving the vulva can actually look a lot like another condition called lichen sclerosis, which I have a video on as a side note. They can look very similar. They can kind of overlap and oftentimes it can be challenging to distinguish the two conditions. You will see those painless white lacy streaks in the vulva oftentimes, but you can develop painful sores, ulcers, itch, discomfort. In men, the genitalia, again, can be affected as well. Typically, they have a collection of small flat top bumps, usually grouped in a circle, often involving the glands of the penis. When it affects the hair follicles, like on your scalp, it's called lichen plano pilaris. You have these little red scaly rough bumps localized over the, over the hair follicle. And with lichen plano pilaris, it's really important to get that diagnosed as soon as possible because that autoimmune attack, that inflammation, extends down the hair follicle, wipes out the hair follicle, and causes scarring. So you get scarring hair loss. So that needs to be treated ASAP. Get rid of that inflammation in there. Get Silence that autoimmune attack so that you preserve the hair. Now, you may have heard that lichen plano pilaris uh, is, is associated with using sunscreen. I have a video kind of going over that, debunking it, to, so to speak. Association does not prove causation, so check that one out, because I talk more about sunscreen and lichen plano pilaris in a dedicated video. It can affect your nails pretty severely, pretty significantly. Uh, fingernails, one fingernail may be affected, or all of your fingernails and all of your toenails. The inflammation can involve the um, the proximal nail fold and scar it down. Yeah, a lot of people actually um, get misdiagnosed as having nail fungus. Here's the thing, nail fungus, really common on the toenails, not so common on the fingernails. And so if you have been told, you know, if you have a nail problem, you show it to your doctor and they're like, looks like a nail fungus, um, back the bus up because that's not super common. And there are a lot of other nail conditions that kind of look like nail fungus. How does one diagnose lichen planus? It's, you know, if a patient comes in with a skin problem, you can kind of tell just by looking, oh, this is characteristic of lichen planus. I always do a skin biopsy because there are a lot of other things that look like lichen planus. So I like to do the biopsy, total body skin exam. So you may have bumps on your wrist. That's a real common location. But don't be surprised if the dermatologist wants you to get undressed and look everywhere because it can be hiding in places you're not aware of and finding it is key because treating it early is important for preventing things like scarring. How do we treat lichen planus? Well, a lot of it will depend on the extent, the severity, the type, but a go-to treatment, like with many chronic inflammatory skin conditions, is going to be a topical steroid to silence that inflammation, right? You have an autoimmune attack coming in and, and trying to attack the skin cells. So a, a topical steroid can 
quiet that down and, and make it go away. Another option as far as topical steroids is actually, it's called Cordran tape. It's a tape that's impregnated with steroids. Um, when you have a, a, an ingredient under occlusion, it really enhances penetration. So the Cordran tape uh, really allows for better penetration of the steroid, and that can be especially helpful in this scenario. So there's topical steroids, also intralesional steroids, meaning shoot the medicine right into the skin or into the nails. Numb the area first, um, and then inject, it's called Kenalog or, or um, Triamcinolone, direct, inject it directly into the nail to silence that inflammation. Likewise, inject it directly into the scalp. It's a go-to for lichen plano pilaris on the scalp, intralesional steroids. Now I have a video all about topical steroid side effects. They definitely can have side effects, especially in areas where you have skin on skin contact, like under the arms in the groin area uh, or on the face. Things like stretch marks can form, persistent redness, steroid acne, there are a lot of potential side effects. So alternatives to topical steroids would include something called a topical calcineurin inhibitor. Um, maybe you have heard of Protopic or Elidil, Pimcrolimus, Tacrolimus, that is applied to the skin. These medications, they silence a very specific aspect of the immune system. They have fewer side effects and they're safe to use long-term, like on the face in delicate areas. So that's a great option as well. And of course, what can tretinoin not do? Well, it can definitely be helpful, actually topical retinoids in general, whether it be tretinoin, tazeratine, adapalene, can be helpful for improving lichen planus. Depending on the extent though, um, a lot of patients will require a systemic medication, meaning something that you take by mouth that is, is going internally. So initially, oftentimes, uh, a patient will be put on a course of prednisone, which is a systemic steroid, not something you'd wanna be on long-term, but it really wipes this out real fast. Uh, and the, the goal is to start that while also starting something else that takes a little bit longer to start working. So what are the something else's? Uh, there are a lot of options. Methotrexate, another medication called azathioprine, suppresses the immune system in a specific way. Um, something called mycophenolate, mofetil, or Celsept, also a great option, depending on the patient, of course. And um, even though it can cause drug-induced lichen planus, it also can treat the other variants. It's called hydroxychloroquine. It goes by the brand name Plaquenil. That can be pretty effective, too, for lichen planus. A retinoid by mouth called acetretin, seriotane. Not going to be right for everyone, like women of childbearing age wouldn't consider that, but... Uh, that certainly can be effective as well. Adalimumab or Humira, that actually works pretty well for some cases of lichen planus because it knocks down a specific little little guy in the immune system that's kind of revved up in, in lichen planus. It's called TNF-alpha. So those are systemic medications. You know, they do have side effects. Not going to be right for everyone. It will depend, uh, again, on the extent. Um, things, you know, other things that you've tried, failed, etc. But um, you know your dermatologist can talk about those with you, and you know potential side effects and what would be the right choice for you. There's also phototherapy um, with ultraviolet light uh, because ultraviolet light, as I've said before, it suppresses the immune system in the skin. Uh, so we can use that to our advantage by using a very carefully selected wavelength and dose to calm down the inflammation in the skin. Safe, unlike going out in the sun where you're exposed to a really high dose that damages the skin. So phototherapy is actually a great option um, because you know it's just treating the skin. You don't have to worry about side effects internally. Um, the problem with phototherapy is accessibility. Not everyone does the phototherapy. Not everyone has phototherapy in their area. And it's also something that you have to come in for pretty regularly, and that may not you know, that may not work with your schedule, but phototherapy is an amazing tool. They have in-home phototherapy devices. Insurers will often pay for them. You know, your doctor has to write a letter and, you know, go through all of the hoops to get it approved. So it's a, you know, process and the insurance company may like insist that you jump through X, Y, and Z hoop before they acquiesce. But all that to say, like, 
if it is out of the way for you to go in for phototherapy, talk to your derm, talk to your doctor about an in-home unit because you may be a candidate for that, you know, and your insurance might cover it. One of my go-tos for lichen planus in the mouth is really simple. It's called tacrolimus swish and spit. So tacrolimus is a medication um, that you know, it can be applied to the skin. Again, it's a calcineurin inhibitor, but it also can be taken by mouth in a pill form uh, for suppressing the immune system. But a cool thing about the pill form, the capsule, um, for oral lichen planus is that you don't actually have to ingest it. You can just take a one milligram capsule of tacrolimus. Uh, the doctor has to write a prescription for it. You dissolve that in half a liter of, wa of tap water and you swish it around in your mouth for two minutes and then you spit it out. And you do this twice a day, can be super effective for oral lichen planus. The other thing with lichen planus in the mouth is oral hygiene. Oral hygiene, oral hygiene, oral hygiene. Because um, poor oral hygiene, bacteria in the mouth, it's gonna flare the lichen planus. You know, the, the inflammation from inflamed gums, from bacteria, plaque, further agitate the immune system to come in and continue to attack those keratinocytes in your mouth. So what can you expect with this condition? Like, are you gonna have to live with this for the rest of your life? Um, is it gonna get worse? Is it gonna spread all over? Honestly, the outcome depends on the type that you have. For lichen planus of the skin, Majority of cases will resolve in one to two years. As it, once it resolves, it often leaves behind a dark mark. There's no inflammation anymore, but the dark mark is there, especially if you have a deeper skin tone. And that is tincture of time, a lot of cases, in terms of resolving it. Of course, there are topicals and, and things that can be done to hasten the clearance of it, but it is, a, it is a waiting game for that hyperpigmentation to clear out for a lot of people. But for most people, it tends to clear up in a couple of years. That being said, you know, it is a chronic and relapsing inflammatory skin condition. About one in five people will experience a second flare up of the skin like in planus. So, you know, you're not always out of the, out of the woods, but uh, you, you know, it, it, it typically burns out. Now the mouth, on the other hand, uh, the mucosal surfaces, the, the genitalia, that's another story. That tends to persist, unfortunately, for years and years and years. Uh, in the case of lichen planus, though, that is triggered by a medication, it will actually slowly resolve uh, once that medication has been discontinued. That's why when you go to your derm um, and they're looking at this and you know trying to figure everything out, that's why your medication history, the medications that you take, even stuff you take this over the counter, dietary supplements, that's why you have to lay all that out there on the table and let them know everything you're taking so they can go back and, and say, is there anything here that could potentially be a drug culprit? Whenever you have a skin problem that's tempting to try and do a bunch of stuff to fix it, I suggest not doing a bunch of stuff. Um, instead, what you should try and do, <laughs> this is advice, it's easy to give, difficult to follow. Manage your stress. Uh, try and not put yourself in situations, overextend yourself to the point where you're getting stressed out and or it's taking a toll on your sleep because stress is a major trigger. It, it really rubs us up quite a bit. Uh, so make sure you're prioritizing your mental health, getting good sleep. You wanna avoid scratching or picking at your skin because again, this exhibits that Kebner phenomenon. So anytime you scratch, um, your, scratch your skin if it's itchy, unfortunately, it can be. Uh, scratching, picking, using like a back brush, back scrubber, dry brushing, those all out the window. You don't wanna do that with, with this. If you do have itch instead of scratching, uh, get yourself a cool compress and apply that right away at, at the first signs of an itch. Um, or take your moisturizer and keep it in the refrigerator so it's chilled, apply it on that itchy skin while it's cool. Um, that can help. And your dermatologist may prescribe you antihistamines, which can kind of calm down the itch sensation. The medications that are used to treat the skin will help get rid of the itch as well. Moisturize. Also, um, I've said this before, but something that's super underrated for skin, um, especially an inflammatory, itchy skin condition, is a colloidal oatmeal bath. Super hydrating, soothing, um, relaxing, that, that definitely can help and is inexpensive. When it comes to lichen planus in your mouth though, um, oral care, oral care, oral care. You want to be brushing your teeth twice a day, flossing, don't slack uh, because plaque, uh, don't slack with the plaque. <laughs> 
Make sure you're going to the dentist. There is actually an increased risk of certain oral cancers with lichen planus in the mouth. Uh, so don't smoke, don't chew tobacco, and be real conservative, minimal with your alcohol consumption. Because alcohol in general increases your risk of oral cancer. If you got lichen planus on top of that, you don't want to be drinking alcohol heavily. You want to be getting screened for oral cancer regularly too. Every six to 12 months, you know, your dentist can do that when you go for your dental visits. Don't slack on dental care. Make sure you're going for your cleanings. That goes for everyone, but with this, it's super important because plaque, mm -mm, it's gonna attack. Some foods are really just miserable with oral lichen planus, spicy foods, citrus, uh, any kind of tomato-based thing like pasta sauces, pizza sauces can actually aggravate this. And a, a culprit with any kind of mouth sore, mouth problems, or a lot of our snack foods these days, um, they have that intense flavor coating meant to be pleasurable, um, but it really can agitate the oral mucosa, not something you want to play around with when you have lichen planus in the mouth. Um, like or, or sharp snack foods, you know, those cereals that you eat and the roof of your mouth ends up hurting, avoid those if you have oral lichen planus. Unfortunately, a lot of caffeinated beverages can aggravate the lichen planus in the mouth. So that includes coffee, colas, teas, all potentially can aggravate lichen planus in the mouth. Also, you know, oral hygiene is really important. Don't skip out on the fluoride because it helps cut down on cavities. But um, consider choosing a toothpaste that is not mint or cinnamon flavored. Those tend to burn more in the mouth and can aggravate the oral mucosa. Maybe choose a kid's toothpaste that's like strawberry flavored. Those tend to be a lot milder. Also, a lot of the kid's toothpaste tend to not be as intensely foamy. And that foaming aspect of toothpaste it's not necessary for the oral hygiene, but it really can, you know, be irritating. To try and, you know, maybe choose a, a kid's toothpaste. That's a recommendation I give for a lot of things, whether it be canker sores in the mouth um, or perioral dermatitis, because those ingredients can irritate the skin around the mouth, but also with oral lichen planus, choose, you know, consider choosing a, a kid's toothpaste. Do really mild skincare, you know, moisturizers to help keep the skin hydrated and cut down on itch. Avoid harsh soaps. Aggressive bathing practices. Again, you don't want to be scrubbing the skin. It can elicit more, more lichen planus. And you don't want to be taking long hot showers to dry out and irritate the skin using harsh soaps. A bunch of skincare products might cause irritation. Rev this up. Just keep it real bland. A skincare product is not really going to cure this or get rid of it but skincare products that irritate your skin can make this worse. So less is more in the realm of skincare products with lichen planus. If you have the actinic variant that exists in sun exposed areas, sun protection is key. I don't think I mentioned this when I was talking about phototherapy. Phototherapy would not be a good idea if you have the actinic variant because UV is what elicits the autoimmune attack in that, that variant specifically. Um, so if you have that variant, you know, be as aggressive as possible with sun protection. All right, y'all. So this is by no means an extensive, all-encompassing lichen planus video. I mean, I, you could probably have a YouTube channel where you upload videos daily on lichen planus and have something new to talk about every single day. Because like I said, there are so many variants, um, locations, uh, morphologies, meaning shapes and, and how the skin problem appears, different treatments, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this, you know, is kind of an overview of the basics of lichen planus, what you should understand, some practical tips for self-care with this condition. I really hope this video was helpful to you guys. On the end slide, I'm gonna link my video on lichen sclerosis. So definitely check that out if you are dealing with this problem in the genital area. I give a lot of tips there as far as self-care as well. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.